Oh, I went. Okay. <laughs> hey, good evening, everybody. Sunday night webinar. It's May 13th, Mother's Day. Uh, basically, we only have one more schedule. We may have a couple more after that, depending on uh, some circumstances. And we hope you, uh, you know, we hope you will enjoy tonight. And uh, I'm Gene Colbago. I'm Roger Carroll. And yeah, we'll get right to it, I guess. And I was just telling Raj beforehand that this has been a very, how shall I put it, frustrating day for me because I went to, you know, a, a Sunday morning and, you know, I sat down to start getting ready for this evening. And my one computer decided that it was time to upgrade. First of all, it was finishing one upgrade. And then it decided that it was time to do the upgrade 1803. And I think we mentioned that last week. 1803 is what um, Microsoft calls the, I think it's the spring 2018 upgrade. It's a big upgrade, okay? And like a fool, I said, yeah, go ahead and do it. I'll work on my other computer. So I went over to my other computer and the same thing happened. And uh, as we said before, last week we were discussing the the way Microsoft uh, you know, does the upgrades for Office 365. They don't all come down at once, uh, which is another thing I found out today on one of my computers. Uh, the same thing with the Office uh, or for, with the Windows updates. So uh, anyhow, I let those go and I've got them updated and I'm on my, I'm, I'm on my Surface tonight, Raj. I, 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 I have not used the Surface much on, uh, on the webinars, but I got the little Surface Pro going tonight and for several reasons and it works out really well. Anyhow, as I went to my Surface afterwards, I went on and it had just updated last week. And the first thing that pops up was something about, do you want to see about the latest updates? So I clicked on it and it took me to something that we've, I don't think we've ever discussed that everybody can find useful in Windows, okay? And it's over here, it's in your Windows start menu, it's in one of your apps. And by the way, uh, in case you don't know, you know, you don't have to scroll down. I've got to scroll down a little bit. You don't have to scroll down. You can tap on any one of those letters and it'll give you the whole alphabet and you can just click on the one you want to go to. I want to go to the letter T and tips. Microsoft puts out and updates a, an app called tips. And I started looking at it and I said, geez, you know, I don't know about you, Raj, but I've never really looked at this before. And it's pretty good. It's got some really good, I learned a lot of stuff and a couple of things we might want to try later. So anyhow, the first thing I did is, what's new in this release? I'm not going to click on it because it's a minute and 50 seconds of uh, what's in the new uh Windows 18.03 update, which is, uh, yeah, it was pretty easy. Uh, there are two major things, and I'm going to show them to you. Uh, well, one of them at least. But as you go through this tips, I started roaming through it later, and there were some really good things here. Let me just, yeah, my one thing, if tips for your surface, you, well, you won't see that if you go to tips. And, oops, uh, let me get rid of that for a second. I'm ahead of myself. Uh, but you'll see some of these items here. The one here, create and edit vi videos, we could have used last week because we talked about uh, the photos app and this uh, shows you quite a bit of how to do it. But I thought, well, I'll start, start right here in what's new and it's got some new things in it. The first thing that it does here, it says return to past activities in your timeline. And you're going, what the heck is that? This is one of the new items that they put in the update. And it's kind of cool. It's down here in the task view. The task view used to show, or probably for many people, still shows the 
tasks that are open. And when you click on it, you'll see the tasks that are open. Let me just minimize this for a second so I can do this. Okay? But now, these are the tasks that are open. I have a whole bunch of things running. But notice, you'll notice on the side here, I have a timeline that I can pull down. And it has a timeline of sites and programs that I have used in the past couple of weeks. And all I would need to do to reopen one of these is to click on it. This is new to the new update. It's called Timeline, and it's pretty cool. And you can, and this goes all the way back to May 1st. I have not used my Surface a great deal lately, so there's not a lot here, but you can see that these are some of the things that I've been using and I have been using in the, in the, you know, in the recent past. That's called Timeline, and they added that in, okay? But that'll be part of the update. Uh, if you are at home and feel adventuresome, you can get the new update before they decide to give it to you, and it's a very simple thing to do. Just go to your, uh, the settings thing, the settings, and where it says update and security, click on that. And if you have not done the update, check for update. Click on check for updates, and it will basically lead you through uh, updating your computer to the latest updates. It's real easy, and it does it mostly itself. It does take, oh, I don't know, have you done yours, Raj? Yeah. It takes about 45 minutes or so, right? Depending uh, on the speed yeah. of the computer. Right. It depends on the speed of the computer, too, how old yours is. But it was cool. And I have to admit, knock on wood, I have not run into any problems with it. But anyhow, I thought that was kind of cool, this timeline. And it might be useful because you go, oh, geez, where was I doing yesterday? What was the name of that? Doc? You can go back and look. The next thing, uh, this one, I think, is because they have finally brought out the Microsoft products for Google and the Android phone. So you can do it there, okay? That's the only thing I could figure out with that one, that tip. But this one, uh, I've worked on it for a while and I could do it. It says share a picture with a nearby device. If you have several devices that are running like Bluetooth, like your phone and your uh, computer, you can go into photos, click on a picture, hit share, and then one of the windows will allow you to select sending it to your phone. I thought that's really cool, but I don't think I'm going to do it very often. I don't know what you would think about that, Raj. But well, you know, I use I, something the the AirDrop feature on my Apple, yeah the, on my yes phone, yeah the AirDrop which or is, I think also, it's very similar to idea yeah uh, yeah you can you know, and if I'm in a hurry I, I throw it in Dropbox and it's automatically everywhere and or up on uh, OneDrive and it's everywhere too. Anyhow, the next one, however. This was kind of weird. It says, switch seamlessly from your phone to your PC. And I did this a couple of months ago, and I may have talked about it. What it is, it's really weird. And I'm not sure if they were trying to be sneaky or what. If you hit add my phone, it asks for your cell phone's number. It sends a text to your phone. You click on the text, and a, uh, a little uh, window will open up, and it says click here. You click on it and it installs Microsoft Edge onto your device, whether it's the Android or the Apple device, uh, phone. And then what you can do is if you are working on your uh, phone and wanna send it to your computer for some reason, all you have to do, there's a little uh, button you can click and it will instantly send the website or the email or right you know to your phone again i'm not sure i would use it a great deal but it's there something there the things that they're doing 
okay? The next one, however, oh, look at this. Emojis, oh my goodness gracious. How to add emojis from your keyboard. And I just realized that I must have closed some stuff. Oh, there it is, okay. Uh, that's what I need. Uh, there's a blank document. Uh, you can do emojis in several ways. If you have a key, you know, you're on your regular keyboard computer, all you have to do is hold down that little Windows button and type the period, and all these emojis open up. And you can add emojis if you want, okay? There's another way of doing that. We'll see that in just a minute, okay? I think, Raj, the, uh, the onboard keyboard works too, hmm. and we're going to get to that in a minute, yeah. Uh, now I've lost, now why have I do, oh, I see. This is cool. Did you see this? I have so many things running in my toolbar down here that I have two layers of two things here. That's kind of cool. Anyhow, the next one was interesting. Last week we talked about adding, let me just go back here to Office we talked about adding dictate to Microsoft Word. I looked at my Surface here, and it's not there yet. The update for uh, this uh, is uh, from the school uh, account that I have, so I don't have that yet. I do have the dictation, but they have put in something that you might want to try. You can try it several different ways. And you might be able to use your school laptop and dictate, even without dictation on it. The first way, and it says it on that little, if you go to tips and read that, is to hold down the Windows button and type the letter H. You'll see that it is now copying whatever I say, period. I'm, I'm going to turn off the, notice that when I typed Windows letter H, it opened a dictation microphone blank at the top. And it will fill in any text box. I played with this for a while. I went to uh, PowerPoint. It works with PowerPoint. It works with uh, Chrome. I went into Chrome and start, you know, went into Google and put in a couple of addresses or went for searches, and it worked that way. I know we have uh, Cortana down there, and but this worked kind of cool. You might want to try that on your school computer. I don't know if that would work, Raj, but it might. And I don't know if this has been added just for the new Windows Update 1803 or not. I, I think it is. But boy, it is kind of cool too. Yeah, you can do this on your, but uh, even if you don't have on Word the dictate, you could, if you update your home computer uh, to the new uh, latest uh, Office 10 updates, you will have this. Another thing that while we're there, uh, we talked about uh, there is a touch keyboard. And if, I, I don't know if you can see it down in my lower right-hand corner by my time here, I have my mouse down there. If you don't have that, the touch keyboard, you can add it easily simply by clicking on the toolbar, right clicking on the toolbar, I apologize, right clicking on the toolbar and clicking on the show touch keyboard button. And while you're at it, uh, Raj has shown this a couple of times he's used it and they're doing some new things with this too. The show windows ink workspace button. That's that little pen thing. Recommend that you put those two on because they can be useful too. I'll show you what I mean. If you do this, oh, I'm in the wrong place. Oh, that wasn't supposed to be there yet. Okay, there's the keyboard. 
yes, I can use my uh, finger now to type, okay? All right, improperly, obviously. And the keyboard will go away as soon as I start doing keyboard, regular keyboard stuff. I'm going to bring that back. Notice also there is a microphone on this keyboard and it works very much the same way. Once upon a time, there were, <laughs> there were three little bears, period. Okay, I don't know, again, you might wanna try that, see if that will work on your school computers. I don't know if that will work, but this is another way that we can get some dictation and you know, it might help those students who have trouble typing. Uh, also, uh, we had mentioned the, uh, the emojis before, down in the uh, lower left here, there is the emoji a button for the emojis, same emojis, I'm pretty sure, only they're, they look a little bit bigger, okay? So that's that's another thing that, you know, I found out with the tips. And, you know, while I was going through, let's see, there were a couple other things that it was kind of cool going through. There's the listening. And you might even try that with, uh, uh, you know, PowerPoint or whatever. It will not open a product. Uh, a program. Uh, remember when we talked about Cortana, Cortana is our little item down here. It has a microphone and it will open programs. We can show you that if you've never seen that. Uh, but this one only works in text boxes, but it works really well. And I think, was that I thought there were one, a couple more tips here. I've got some stuff in the way here, so you'll have to pardon me. Oh, stay focused with focus assist. <laughs> okay. Yeah. All right. I don't know uh, how many of you use this, but down in the uh, – hit this lower right-hand corner and click on this little thing, and a whole bunch of stuff opens up. And they are actually – there are, are, are many important things here. Uh, you know, you can go to the tablet mode back and forth and so forth. But there is one thing called focus assist. And focus assist simply turns off some of the distractions while you're working, like if you're getting uh, messages or something like that. And you will not be getting those things. It kind of closes them off. And you can go to the action center and decide what you can get so that you can focus on your work. I'm not sure that I would use that a great deal, but you might. Okay. Another thing, by the way, while we're here, if you use your computer at night, some people, you know, the eyes, might, this bright might, might be a little too bright. There's a little thing called nightlight down here. And if you click on that, notice, I don't know, can you see how my screen sort of kind of, faded a little bit it's kind of it kind of gets uh i don't know see see like yeah. yeah exactly exactly and it's a little easier to look at at night to be honest with you i kind of you know okay <laughs> there's also a mobile hotspot there if you want to connect your other devices onto the internet through your computer but this is that was kind of interesting too the, you know there was a whole bunch of stuff there and i just you know started roam, roaming through the uh tips here and it went to the Microsoft Edge. And it has pin sites you frequently use. Okay, we'll talk about that in a little bit if we get a chance, but there was the best of Microsoft Edge here. We talked about Microsoft Edge some weeks ago. And, you know, they are doing some good things now, I think, Raj. I think they're you know, heading in the right direction, adding some good things. They're probably stealing many of them from, from Chrome. Uh, not, I'm sorry, I shouldn't have said that, but they're doing some pretty good things. Before I go, uh, Raj, one more thing I'd like to just mention is something that Roger was mentioning, but when I got into this, I realized something else that I hadn't realized. I learned a lot today. And this is the Ink Workspace, okay? And if you click this, this little guy opens up. And actually, it allows three different 
let me just get rid of this for a second. Let me get to my desktop and then this will make it a little easier. Okay, three different types of things. The first one is sticky notes. You know, if you're, this is, I don't know, I was trying to think of a, uh, a reason you might want to stick a note to your uh, desktop. Well, you know, uh, maybe you're uh, finishing up the day and you want to remember something to do first thing in the morning, you know, uh, you know, run off quiz, okay? And you can then just click this and now you have a sticky note that when you start the computer the next day or open it up to the desktop, there is your note that will remind you. Kind of an interesting little thing that might work. And you can put notes in there if you want, you know, uh, to open things or shut things or whatever. But there are a lot of, you might want to put sticky notes. And you can do that on, uh, I think, on web pages and things like that too, can't you, Raj? Uh, I think so. I'm not I'm sure how well I, they I haven't, stick. I haven't used it very much. Actually, I yeah. haven't used it. I did yeah. it to see what it looked like, and that was it. I'm, you know, I'm trying to remember now. I that in Edge, I think they were trying to put that into Edge, so that you could put sticky notes. And when you went back there, they were still there. Okay. Now, having said that, I may be wrong, and I've been wrong many times. The next one down looked familiar to me. I clicked on it, and I went, "Oh my goodness." This reminds me a great deal of the uh, whiteboard app that we've been talking about. Remember, we were talking about a whiteboard app that was in Beta Raj? Yep. And this is it. I mean, if you wanted to, you don't need to put this. If you have this, you could put this on your computer. It would be on your uh, smart board. And then you could, you know, write on it. There are different things you could do. Uh, uh, let me get my pen out here. Uh, I don't know. Sure. Okay. See. Okay. You can use pick pens with colors, of course. And then, of course, once you pick the color, you can pick the size. Uh, I'm not. I'm not doing very well here. Okay. So that now you, and you have various pencils, pens. You have the uh, the markers. Um, over here, we have a protractor, and we have a ruler. You know, they're, they're just little things that you could use to, you know, if you wanted to do something and show something on. Uh, I think this would be a good thing that you could use on your smart board and you could write right on your computer and rather than having to go to the smart board. Okay. And if you needed to get rid of the ruler, you just tap the blue thing and it goes away. And then you can save them. You can share them just the same way uh, that we talked about. Uh, uh, see, I'm logged in as... Uh, 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 my other account, so I don't have my school account going. But if I had my school account going, I could just type this in uh, and share this with Raj, and he could even collaborate, I think, with me on that. I think that was the key feature of the whiteboard app, was yeah. that you could get several people collaborating on a, thinking, on a clean yeah, slate. See, yeah, this is a share, and I'm not sure it's exactly, see, it, it, you know, these are just a few of the, you know, I just have a few people in this on, on this one, but I'm not sure if this shares or not. Okay. It, it says share here, but it, you know, okay. So I'm not sure how that does that. <coughs> Excuse me. And of course you can save it into a bunch of different places. And one of them being OneNote, which, uh, you know, would probably be a, you know, you could set up another uh, a, a folder for your, or your pages here. Lastly, if you did this again, you can, and I think this is where Raj did it, he actually wrote on the screen. Okay? Like, you know, he would do this you know, and then go something like uh, open, open this or something like this, you know. Okay? So that would be uh, you know, another use that you could use the uh, ink for. And it's pretty easy. And you, again, could save that and uh, play with that. But anyhow, here's a little final thing. I, I was kind of impressed with the tips. There's a lot more here. Uh, I would recommend that you 
go through the best of Microsoft Edge. You might, if you've never used Edge, you might. Um, where was it? Personalize your PC. If you are wondering how to set up background pictures, colors, so forth and so on, and get it looking like uh, you want, this will lead you right through it. It's got some really good uh, tips there. The basics, uh, to be honest with you, the basics, to me, were not exactly basics. Sign in with one account on all your devices. I'm not sure I quite understood it. I'll be honest with you. I, I went through it. Get apps. Well, go to the sh uh, store and get more apps, okay? <laughs> now, this is Cortana. We talked about that before. And, uh, you know, in case you have not seen Cortana, uh, we will leave you with that. Cortana is down here in the bottom left. And it says, type here to search, but there's generally a microphone. And uh, if you uh, have not set it up, it will help you to set up the microphone on it the first time you click on it. And, I mean, it's really cool. I mean, you can do things. What is the weather in Niagara Falls? You see? Okay. Or open Word 2016. There you go. But again, dictation, talking to things, you're getting, you know, it's, it's becoming more and more <laughs> adaptive, uh, easy to use, and you can use it a lot of different ways. So anyhow, take a look, go to the apps that you have, go to the letter T and check on the tips. I think you'll enjoy that. Have some fun. You'll learn a little something. I actually learned a lot today. Raj, got anything to say about that before I... Uh, except that you're on your Surface and the school laptops haven't updated. No, I'm saying, yeah, yeah. But I'm well, saying... They're, they're, most of what you're showing is not available on the school laptop. Not on the school, but if you have a computer at home, you can update the tips, to the latest yeah, the, 1803. The well, I won't say few and far between, but they're different. They aren't, yeah, they aren't the yeah. most recent thing. I'll, I, I can, I'll, I'll show them very quickly when I get the screen. Yeah, they are. Yeah, you're, yeah. I, that's. I was trying to say that that it needs to be done on your home computer, and and again, it's another reason why we need to get the latest updates on our school computers uh, you know, out to it. That it would be more useful too, of course. Okay, but anyhow. Uh, let me switch it over to you. Uh, where are we here? We're looking at my web page, which I'm going to come back to. You're looking at it now, Gene? Yes, we got okay. it. Uh, but Gene, again, you go into your uh, start button here, go over to uh, as Gene was showing you how to quickly go to the tips window. And this is, you're going to see quite a bit of difference from what uh, Gene was showing us. Even on the, the what's new stuff, we're, we're not there yet. And I know we have a different operating system, so it's going to appear a little differently uh, on your school yes. machine as we are from our personal devices, whether it's a Surface yeah. or whatever, HP or Dell, whatever you might have, uh, as you're, even uh, say a Mac. <laughs> Uh, you you won't see some of these these things as well, but you can browse the tips. Another nice thing was um, I, I don't think you got that far. But to browse some of the videos that are basically hands hand holding how to do a number yes, of these yes. things that are there mm -hmm. as well. But uh, you can you know, get that through your start menu as Gene was showing. Go to and a quick way to get there. I, I use that probably more frequently than anything because I. First, I don't update all my start menus, and I don't update my taskbar. Yeah, yeah me either. Uh, I just, I just, just simply go to things. Uh, I want to start by answering a couple of questions from last week's uh, survey. And I, okay. I'm not, I did, I block, I printed out the the survey, but only the part that had the the text responses from the survey. And the, the one question, I think it's a good question, is if I were to create a forms quiz. 
for my students as homework, how would I get that to them? Do students have a district office 365 account or email? And the answer is yes. Every single student in the city of Niagara Falls from I think kindergarten on up, but certainly you know second grade where we've been working, uh, the, the network sign-on that they have is their access uh, pathway to the Office 365. When you're in your uh, classroom environment, if you've set up your uh, Teams as we are working in this week or uh, a class notebook, it will show up and you, as a teacher, you can create the forms, push the forms out uh, there as well. So, you, but you need to get up, uh, you know, get established with uh, uh, Office 365, OneNote, OneDrive, um, and I think the direction we're heading is for this other thing called Teams, which includes mm -hmm. all of the above with with that as well. Um, just to the, jump in, Roger. I'd yeah, go right ahead. Yes. So just so people know, I had, you know, if you're a primary teacher, you do have to get permission. I don't know if that's changed or if you have an update on that, but as a second grade teacher, I had to, because uh, I think they, they set up the, they set it up for third, third through 12th grade students yes. automatically, but it's not done that way for primary. So you just, I, I mean, they're not. I don't think there's any resistance to it. I just think that was the priority. I did exactly. I don't think they envisioned it being uh, fully uh, rolled out below third grade. Um, mm -hmm. But that discussion uh, may may change. Why not? But it it does include uh, uh, mean that there's some work behind the scenes to set up the classes and so on, which is one of the other questions is, is there a way to upload students into the program or do they have to create their own notebook? The answer to that is you don't have to up, it, it's done for you. Uh, the, the district does much like they populate your, uh, your grade book. This is done uh, for you as well. You're, uh, there may be some, um, Oh, some exceptions here and there. A student leaves and he shouldn't be on the list, or he's new to the class and he hasn't been added. There's uh, kind of a constant update going on of student movement uh, in and out of school, in and out of district, and so on that goes on with it. Um, so that that's all part of the infrastructure. They're asking teachers to do as little as possible as far as needing to put all their classes in. It's probably not uh, as big a request of a primary teacher or an elementary school teacher as it is certainly like at the secondary schools where a teacher could have, you know, six or seven sections of a class. That that's a lot. That's asking a lot there. But that's why these things are pre-populated, all, all kind of like behind the scenes, um, and so on. So that that's going. Uh, in there, but your, your students do have access at home. In fact, the reason I have my web page come up because I want to go back and talk uh, some more about forms this week as some of the other features of it. Uh, on my web page, which again I remind you is accessible both my web page and Gene's web page, whatever school you, uh, where you are you're teaching, if you go to the teacher web pages on the school districts. A home page, you'll see my name there, Gene's name there, as well as uh, the other the other two people who work with us uh, through the course of the year. And you can get to either one of our web pages very simply there, and I'd invite you to come and look at. Uh, I updated all uh, this in the last couple of days. It's called Fun with Forms. Where are you? There we are. Um, and I, I created a couple of. We talked last week more only, mainly about surveys, and uh, Dave pushed some stuff out. We did some fun things with some kids this week uh, in the form of a survey. But when you go into forms in Office 365, which I'll show you shortly, you, you can create a survey or you can create a quiz. They look very similar when you're working with them. But what I did was I pushed out um, a couple sample ones, uh, quizzes and survey options. This, this whole page talks about that a little bit. But then down the page, I showed how you can link a quiz or a survey to your 
class web page if you have one. And so that this is a link. It could, when you hover over it, notice how it changes to the hand. This will go out to uh, a survey, or you can actually embed it. And we've shown you several times how to do that. And it, it may even be simpler to embed the created survey or quiz, whatever you want, uh, and put that right on your web page as well. And they function exactly the same. I embedded a very quick uh, quiz uh, using place value to round, and I'll show you how I got that. There's some other really neat uh, things that you can work with that are real time savers. So you, a student would enter the answer here. It says round 165,681 to the nearest 100. And note there's a point value here. I just take, took this right from the source that I'll show you shortly. Round here, uh, round that as well. And the whole thing, once you get through the quiz, if the, if the students were doing a quiz or an assignment, whatever you pushed out, it might be a review. Uh, once it's submitted, then you, the teacher, then get a notice of you if you make that selection, to go in and review the answers. And once it's submitted, the students can't uh, uh, go in. You know, they're on their own at that point. They, they, they've answered the form. But, but this is a very neat uh, tool way to either, again, you can either link it or you can embed it on your web page. If you link it, there's another link here. It'll go out to the... Uh, created survey. Notice here now this is a one that I also I, I created to show the different survey types or items that you could build into a quiz or as I said a survey. You can have a true false. It recognized me because that's one of the options I took. It says hi Roger when you submit this form the owner me will be able to see your name and email address. You don't have to include that option. There are a way to make it anonymous, but if you're doing this with students, you may want to know who's uh, submitting these answers. So you can create a true or false question. Same idea, you can, instead of true or false, you can say yes or no. You can create a free response item. So whatever you type in here, would appear when it's submitted. There is multiple choice. There's also a rate. You can rate items from the lowest to the highest by the number of stars, or you can do it with uh, numbers. Instead of stars, it could be numbers, one through five, one being the lowest, five being the highest, or if you want to reverse the order, you can make one the highest. This is number one, uh, and so on. You can rank items. So notice that here, uh, what is your favorite fun food? Is it pizza, popcorn, french fries, or potato chips? Well, I really like popcorn, so I'm going to move that up to the top. Note, this is how you would rank them. Uh, the thing I like least may, might be pizza. So I, Okay, that's down. And so it would look like this. And then you would uh, submit this form when the, uh, you have completed taking it. The student or whoever is taking it clicks on submit and off it goes for evaluation. Last week we showed uh, a sample form I sent out to a group a couple weeks ago, what that looks like in graph form. So all of these are shareable and all of these you can evaluate. Again, that this is a link. I embedded a little graphic here. Uh, I made this whole thing up just to show the different uh, various types of items you can include in a forms that you're creating. The other interesting thing is with a form is there's this other Office 365 tool that we've talked about uh, from time to time uh, called Sway. It's a presentation software. It's a little different from PowerPoint, but the idea is it's a presentation tool and you can embed a survey, a survey form into a, a sway and you can uh, embed it and it functions the same. When it's completed, it's submitted. So let's take a look at how we do that. I'm going to sign into my 365 account. And uh, here I am. I'm going to go to my forms app. 
And there, every time you go into your forms, all of the ones that you have created and worked on and saved and so on appear here. And this is, you know, the stuff I've been messing with for a little bit. While I talked about a branching at one point, one of the things you can do is create one of those write your own adventure stories with branching. And it, uh, it, yeah, very simple, very intuitive when you start working with the tool and there's some other things that we did. Here's a, a technology survey. It's kind of a, uh, this is maybe you might ask this of some basic skills or understanding of uh, technology with your students. Some people use computers to write stories. The part of the computer that people use to type the letters and numbers is called the, which do you choose? Okay. Uh, if I, I notice the, uh, I, I don't want to put anybody on the spot here. I, if I preview this, notice right now we're looking at my collection. If I preview it, notice now the little check mark is not there. I, the check marks indicate obviously the correct answers. You can request that the routine um, shuffle the the answer options from question to question. So a couple of students sitting beside each other would be looking at a different order of questioning and so on. So um, these various options, and again, then it would be submitted. But let's go back into my forms. And let's call this um, a new quiz. And notice here, three dots these are appearing in more and more programs uh, they're not just they're not blemishes they actually are uh, options for you to consider in working with whatever tool you're you're in we see it all the time in Chrome and other programs We're, more options education resources hmm I'm gonna create a new quiz but I'm going to use this tool some education resources to create the quiz um, I'm going to whitelist this site. That was a little pop-up blocker. I think that's because I'm in Chrome. It uh, said they recognized something trying to take over the screen. Now, these are the education resources. But the first time you use it, this is all blank. This is because of my previous selections in here. I'm going to use some education resources for a certain grade let's 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 say let's go to sixth grade okay uh, and six focus on sixth grade alone which learning standard are we interested in well this drops down to the common core state standards oh let's see what that looks like common core state standards for math science social studies or language arts let's say language arts and now we're going to search I got 70 results back all of these are pre-created assessments for these particular standards let's take a look at one um, using figurative language ah, capitalization let's see what that looks like Okay, uh, based on my selections, here are the standards being addressed. Um, open Ed must be the, uh, the creator or the publisher of this. It's, this is an assessment, okay. So I'm going to say, let's, let's get this. So it's pulling that in, and I'm going to have a form, or in this case, uh, a form, and it's an actual quiz that I can then now push out to my students if, if I like it. Notice here, it, here, all the questions are here. I don't even know how many total questions there are. Okay, I can add to that or not. So this is the, it pulled these out. Select two sentences that use commas correctly. Ah, a little different form of a quiz. And here are the two options here. So if I now say, I wanna preview this, there is that quiz or assessment without the correct answers indicated. And I have, again, I can have the other option to rotate 
uh, the answer options between uh, any two students. Which one is uses capitalization correctly? I used to hate these questions. Select the sentences so there's more than one sentence you can. So the option is for allow more than one correct answer and so on. And so the, uh, the students make their choices and submit it. But let's look at another feature. Uh, notice here at the top it says computer mobile. Well, you're looking at the computer view. If I say, I want to see, what's this going to look like on a mobile device? Boom. This is what it looks like on a smartphone, which may or may not be an option in the class, depending on what which, uh, devices you have. So there's the computer. We can also see uh, a mobile view. I'll go back now. I can change the theme. The theme is all this pretty stuff around it. Um, let's let's get a little. Uh, I don't like any of these themes. Let's let's go this way just so you can see the difference. Or you can just make it just mm. color the tabs and uh, so on there. Okay. So that's I've done the share uh, the the theme rather over here. Under settings, this is where I choose how uh, I want this to be uh, addressed. Show results automatically, maybe, depends on uh, the thing. In other words, they'll look at the results right away. Um, who can fill out this form? Ah, these are clickable, changeable options. Anyone with the link can take this. Well, that means I, I don't know who took the quiz. I don't know who submitted the, uh, their, the answers for this assessment. Uh, you might want to use this. I, I, this was the one I used uh, previously, sending out to some teachers. So, uh, all I know is these are X number of responses. I don't know who uh, completed them. Or only people in my organization can respond. In other words, only people with uh, accounts in Niagara Falls City School District can take this quiz. If I click this option and you were to take the quiz, push it out there, um, you would be asked to sign in. If you don't sign in, you cannot uh, participate in the survey or the quiz. Now, do I want to know who's taking it? Perhaps I do. If it's students taking a quiz, you certainly probably do. Okay. Um, one response per person. Yeah, I don't want them taking it over again. Record their name. One time each. Now, options for the responses. I'll accept their, all the responses. And down here, if you were doing this for a homework assignment or uh, any kind of thing you want to, to limit, you can have a start date and an end date if you're putting it on your web page. You can say this is going to start Friday night and it's going to conclude uh, 1159 Sunday night. After that, they can't do say the homework assignment and so on. Do you want to shuffle the questions? And uh, the one that I find uh, useful is, do I also, I also want an email response. Uh, every time someone takes the quiz, I want to get an email. Of course, this will really, if you have a large class or several sections, you're going to load up your uh, email inbox, but I want to know this. Uh, perhaps, you know, uh, you're away from your desk, or away from school, and so on. If you want to shuffle the questions, uh, do you want to shuffle all the questions? You want to lock them in place. If you say lock them in place, how do you want to lock them in place? So you have a, a, a good deal of uh, options for uh, managing whatever it is you're putting out there. And uh, let's say an assignment and so on, for students to complete at home, you can, again, a mobile device, whatever you like. And then when you go to share it, 
how do you want to share it? Again, this was under the, the settings tab. We talked briefly about branching as a totally different function for um, if they got a, a right answer, it would go to uh, another area and explain the correct answer, or if they got the answer incorrect, explain maybe, uh, give them a hint or something. But in the settings, what we just talked about here, but or rather in the setting, but in sharing, how do I want to to share this? This is what creates the link that you would copy and put on your web page, which I showed you on my web page. If you want to, you can create a QR code. That's the QR code for this. Uh, a little assessment or quiz, whatever, if you want to do a survey and so on. If you're working in an environment, you might find that kind of fun if it was like a, a, a mystery kind of an assignment. The embed code, you would copy the embed code right here and put that in on your, your web page. The other interesting feature, and I haven't done this yet because we just haven't had uh, the occasion to do it, is I can create a link to this, and so this quiz could be duplicated by whoever I send this link to. We could also collaborate on a quiz, get a link to view and edit the quiz. So there's a, a number of options working with these well, uh, forms. Um, and that's a good question, David. Uh, I've got a question from David. I wonder if the link mm -hmm. could be shared through an app like uh, people, some of the teachers are already using, like Remind 101. I, I don't work with that tool, so I don't know if you can actually embed um, the link with it. It's possible. Can because you hyperlink in a, a text in Remind? I don't know. I yeah, don't that, know. that would be the question, yeah. That's I, I, I don't know. Uh, maybe someone uh, is using uh, Remind and uh, could clue us in on that. But again, you can, um, if here is the link here. You, you just simply copy it. So now you can paste it. I can paste it in emails as I did when I uh, tried this out a couple of weeks ago with the uh, uh, webinar attendees or a survey. I just put the link in there. But again, some, some really interesting, I think, uh, worthwhile options here with forms. It is very simple. David and I were working with his class. We were using um, a forms to play 20 questions. And uh, the kids were pushing, you know, uh, doing some things uh, with that. Uh, think of a number between a certain number and you can, we were working with uh, some different options with this. With, uh, our, no, we were using the Skype for that, I think, weren't we, David? I don't recall. Uh, uh, we were actually using the uh, Teams oh, because they were uh, texting like in real time. Right. So with uh, with forms, uh, you could create a 20 question form with that branching option. If they, I'm thinking of a number between, and so if they guess a number, you could branch to a yes. Uh, of course, 20 questions is all yes or no question. You could branch if they if they guess the wrong number, it would go and give a hint and to redirect them. And maybe after you could have 20 different options and at the end they either are successful or not if they got the, uh, the correct answer. So there are some really interesting possibilities with it. And again, it's this is all really very intuitive. I'm going back to, um, I use the new quiz option, if you recall. And then I said, I use some education resources, which brought me to this and I searched grade level, standards and curriculum area, or curriculum area, then the standards for that curriculum area. Uh, if I had chosen uh, math, I had, there's a routine here. I think this was in fourth grade uh, rounding, uh, place value rounding and so on. Uh, I don't know that there's any limit to the number of quizzes you can uh, work with here. Uh, if I had shared this out or been uh, had another form shared with me that I could duplicate, uh, we would work here. Uh, recent group forms, I haven't done that yet. But this is, I think, a pretty interesting tool. Very, again, 
very simple to work with, um, much like a lot of these tools, very intuitive. You can copy and paste, you can cut and paste, as I did when I went into uh, one of these tech surveys. I was uh, copying and pasting from a previously existing survey that I found online. I picked a couple of questions, and so I was using NILS just uh, to mess around. And you can, uh, well, a new form, uh, I showed you a new quiz. If Instead of using the educational resources here, I just go into a new quiz, and it wants me to add a question. Here is a, let's just call this new quiz, whatever you want to title it. Yeah, I can give a quick description. I can also enter a uh, image, which I did for the one I showed you with the little question marks. I'm going to add a question. What kind of a question do you want for your first option? Is it multiple choice? Okay. Option one, option two, I can have as many options as I want. I choose the one that I want to make the correct option. I can allow multiple answers. I can say you act, you must create, uh, you must answer this question, and I can give it a point value. You noticed on uh, one of those quizzes it had a, a, a point value. So if you want to do that for grading. There are some other options as well. Uh, shuffle options that will allow you to do some math and so on. Uh, I, I really suggest, uh, especially this time of the year, if you're doing some review, you might want to go you know, back to parts of your curriculum and make these are nice review quizzes for any level, really. Uh, someone's got their hand up. Gene, I don't know if it was a yeah, question. I, uh, was kind uh, of, uh, yes, uh, Maria, I'm going to open your microphone, Maria. Are you there? Yes, can you hear me? Yes, Maria. Sorry, you have a sorry I went to go, I raised my hand, but I really went to go type in the box. But, um, oh, go ahead. So the, these quizzes, it reminds me of something I use, like quizzes in the classroom. Yes. Um, now, if I do this with my kids, will the app like grade them for me and then populate yes. the scores back to me like in a spreadsheet or something? Yes. Like the other one does? Yes. yes. When you... Uh, Go through, you're, you're going to look at the responses. Let me go into my forms here. Uh, let's go to the technology. One of these shows a number of responses I wanted to show. Oh, here we go, the technology <laughs> survey. Here are the responses here. And if I want to look at the responses, whether regardless of whether it was a quiz and so on, you can then, here are all the responses. Okay, in summary format, a little pie chart, X number of, of course, a very limited uh, population. But you can then put everything into an Excel spreadsheet from there. Is that what you're interested in? I, I yes. Think. Okay. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. And, and again, it's just a click of a button here. We And this response is here. I'll go back to the forums. It shows you. Like down here, once it, once it's you know live, I have five responses. If I went into my email, you would uh, see that I've got a response, uh, an email that says that there has been a, a, uh, a response in the forms program. It doesn't tell me who did it, unless that's one of the options I have also set up. Okay, so uh, they they do get graded. Uh, you might want to try that out in fact uh one of the ones here maybe we can play with this uh if they had a workshop format or something later on and and see what that grading looks like when we get like in uh this is say six points this was four points uh i don't know what it looks like because i didn't send this out to uh anyone or make any responses with that but uh, I think it, it is that friendly. Now, I know Quizzes is an entirely different program, as is Kahoot and so on. But I think this is right at our fingertips. Uh, I think it's got some value here as well. Oh, yeah. I, I urge you, try it out, Maria, and uh, let us know. And with that, Raj. I think we're we almost at 9 o'clock. In fact, we are, we are at 9 o'clock. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah, there's there's lots here. Again, oh, uh, next Sunday may be our last venture in Sunday night webinars. We uh, 
there are, like Gene mentioned earlier, a couple of things in the work, but um, it may be the last one, but it, please let us know what you'd like to pursue. Some of these things, if we got a group of teachers together at the training room and so on, we could sure. get together and do some, uh, you know, hands-on kind of stuff here and share some ideas yeah. and brainstorm. And, or if, are uh, there things, things for the summer up. even? Yeah. So, yes, I think this will, for, using forms and uh, some of these yeah. individual tools will definitely be targeting mm -hmm. for some work this summer. We just have to lay all that out and see where the district wants to mm -hmm. uh, put some emphasis on it. Okay. So there and we are. And with that, thank you very much, everybody. We, uh, hope you got an idea or two tonight. And uh, with that, we'll say have a great week and hopefully see you next week. Yes. So we have a special guest next week. So I knew. Uh, look we're hoping. <laughs> look, well, she's agreed to appear. So we'll see. We'll yeah. put that out on the emails this week. And yeah. hopefully, again, we will uh, see you all next Sunday night. So good night, everybody. Take care. Good night.